Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, President's reappointment will not affect elections, says AG. Businesses challenged to make tough decisions. And China ready to enhance trade cooperation with Fiji. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. Claims made by opposition MPs that the reappointment of Major General retired Chiochi Konrote as president will have an impact on the upcoming general election has been slammed by Attorney General and Minister responsible for elections, Aya Said Kiyum. There was huge outcry from Sadelpa parliamentarians yesterday who not only walked out of the special parliament sitting, but also called the reappointment illegal. Ali Kimbia reports. The Attorney General says that the process of reappointing the president will not in any way have an impact on the general elections. That uh, of course we'll have the elections. When parliament is dissolved, parliament does not sit. Opposition Whip Semesa Karavaki claims the process used for reappointment can lead to some people questioning the election process. If we are not following the constitution as it says, then the whole process of the issuing of the read and the election that will come thereafter would be affected. Of course, the writ of elections can be issued any time. So if the writ of elections is issued and then parliament is dissolved, then obviously you cannot get parliament to come back in because parliament is no more. Said Kayum says Karavaki needs to understand the law better before interpreting it. Konrote was reappointed president unopposed for another term yesterday. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. A New Zealand political expert believes removing the different constituencies for elections is a right move. Professor John Frankel of Victoria University of Wellington states, however, this will not stop voters from supporting parties they perceive as defending their ethnic interest. Philippe Nakasa reports the comment was made at an event organized by the Citizens Constitution Forum on the role of elections in democracy in Lotoka. Discussions on knowing the different political parties, their manifesto, the role of candidates during campaigns, and analyzing previous elections were some of the topics discussed during the forum. We are vastly different geographically, ethnically. There's so many issues. Vanuelegu has different types of issues. Maritime has different types of issues. What do these issues look like? And how do we make relevant policies that are impact, you know, that has impact on all the whole Fiji? A participant at the forum stated it is comforting to know that the 2014 election was not rigged. Getting rid of constituencies that classify people by race was, I think, a sensible and necessary re reform, but it doesn't stop voters from supporting parties they perceive as defending their ethnic interests. A question was also raised from the floor on why it is important for young people to vote. Let's start um, doing our research. Let's start looking at the candidates, okay? Let's try to ensure we enter political parties, enter, look at their manifesto. How can we ensure that we uh, we partake in this process to ensure that we hold them accountable once they get into uh, parliament also. The CCF is planning to hold similar forums in other parts of the country to get more views from the public. Philippe Naikaso, FBC News. Businesses have been challenged to come out of their comfort zones by acting Prime Minister Ayas Said Kayum today. The minister says too often businesses fail to make tough decisions, which limits the potential for growth and creativity, not only for their business, but for the nation. Rachel Nath with more. The economy minister challenged businesses to take risks when necessary, while giving examples of developed economies. The minister says businesses must refrain from being unethical and should prioritize the laws of the land. The central bank governor also reminded businesses to fully utilize the country's economic growth. The Business 2025 Forum, organized by the Fiji Chamber of Commerce and Industry, aimed to encourage businesses to adapt new technologies for better outcomes. Rachel Nath, FBC News.
The Chinese government is ready to explore new areas of trade with Fiji in an effort to take the current economic cooperation to another level. Some of the key areas the authorities are interested to tap into include tourism, education, agriculture and sport. Ritika Pratap was in China's Guangdong province recently and spoke to the foreign affairs officials. The Guangdong province has achieved remarkable economic and social development in recent decades and now its citizens are eager to explore the world beyond. People in this area love to eat, love to see. They love, they love to have good food. From foreign affairs point of view, we can provide advice, information from our archive or from your resources to show to the local people how beautiful it is. The province hosts tourism festival every year and June says this will give Fijian officials an opportunity to market Fiji. Apart from exploring our country, the Chinese are also interested to learn our rugby skills. We can have exchange of sports teams. You are very strong uh, with uh, uh, rugby, right? We are very low. Not many people know the rules. It's not a popular game in uh, Guangdong, I have to say. But this difference provides us the potential for us to learn from you. Zheng Huiling, who is responsible for organizing high-rank official visits between China and Pacific Island countries, says fisheries is another sector they're looking to tap into. The Pacific Island countries has abundant resources of fish, fish and, and the other uh, sources. Uh, here they, they have a big market for the uh, fish and, and the other resources. So we think that the uh, leaders visit uh, of the, uh, the island country leaders visit to our provinces uh, uh, can uh, create a, a very good chance on opportunities for us to tap our cooperation. These officials say the two governments are in talks to introduce direct flights so that trade corporations can be carried out smoothly. Currently, those traveling to China or Fiji are mainly transiting through Singapore, Hong Kong and South Korea. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Still to come, residents raise concerns on jewellery theft and plans progressing to introduce top-up vending machines. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says a Lombasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bula Fem, number two and Sir. We have a Timeli, a Kona Tau no Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, number two and Nasir. One of them, Bula Fem, number two and Nasir. Never go find in a town and go sing a talk, a kit on the Teletakan and Bula Fem, number two and Nasir. Bula Fem, number two and Nasir. Concerns have been raised about an increase in cases of thieves grabbing jewellery from Indo-Fijian women living near Nosori. The issue was brought to the attention of the Attorney General Ayanse Kayim during a Talanoa session at a temple in Makoi. Ali Kimbia with the details. Some Indo-Fijian women living in the Nosori area have questioned the safety of wearing their wedding jewellery out in public. There were about six ladies in my family who got their jewellery being snatched from them and I don't know what you guys are doing about this. Kirang says other women living in Nosori town have encountered the same experience. Attorney General Ayasad Kayum says there have been increased police reports about the matter and they have dealt with some cases already. And uh, that's something, of course, we've taken heed of. In fact, the Commissioner of Police has addressed this issue also. And we want more people to come with more information. He says they're also working with the police to ensure these types of cases are dealt with accordingly. It's the sentimental value uh, of you know, things like Mangal Sutra. And uh, so uh, we've said to raise those issues with us and with the police, of course, are working hard to address those issues. However, Kiran claims numerous reports have been lodged to the police, but nothing has been done. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Fiji Mediation Centre is hopeful more cases will be brought before them before it's taken to the courts. While speaking at an awareness session on the services provided by the centre, 
Chairperson Jenny Sito says more people are using their services since it, its uh, establishment. Philippa Nicasso has more. Family disputes, land issues, landlord and tenancy grievances and contractual disputes are some of the cases resolved by the Fiji Mediation Center, which has received the Judicial Department's recognition. What we're trying to do is encourage the judiciary, encourage the masters of the court to say to litigants, why don't you try, litigate, uh, why don't you try med uh, mediation before you actually go to court? And in, and in other countries as well. So in com some countries it is compulsory that you do go to mediation. A current High Court judge has also recommended the services of the Fiji Mediation, stating it's effective. Getting the people to talk so that they come up with their problem. Whereas in a court or in arbitration, it's handled by a lawyer, the lawyer will put forward their case. Similar to the Talano concept, mediation allows people to talk about their issues. Mediation is a confidential and private process. Unlike in the courtroom, where people can go, observe and listen, with mediation, there is strict confidentiality. The center was established in 2016 and currently has 42 mediators. Philip and I, Castle, FPC News. Vodafone plans to add more features and functionalities to the e-transport system to provide more services to Fijians. Regional Chief Executive Pradeep Lal says they are working on a project to implement 24-hour e-ticketing self-service top-up vending machines. Kritika Kumar reports. The introduction of vending machines will supplement the current e-ticketing top-up services. Agent network will always remain there because you can't put, it's like ATMs, you can't have it everywhere. So the, one of the advantages is with the vending machines, people could go there 24-7 actually uh, and be able to do it. The machines will be bought from a Hong Kong-based company, tap to pay The vendor which we are working with are, is in the testing phase and our engineers are working with them. And once that is completed, then the machine would be shipped to Fiji and the installation will go ahead. Chief Marketing Officer Rajneesh Prasad says the machines will be placed at all major bus stations to improve the current top-up options. Actually, uh, once the vending machine comes in, we will commission it in, in the different bus stations and then there will be an educational process as well ongoing uh, in terms of campaigns, in terms of promotions around it, in terms of how people uh, need to use it. The project will be carried out in phases. The first phase has cost over $2 million. Vodafone PG says the vending machines will be installed by the end of this year. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Social Democratic Liberal Party is mourning the loss of one of its representatives and Member of Parliament, Anare Vande. Vande passed away today after a short illness. Vande had a distinguished career of more than three decades as a civil servant. He also served on various committees and boards, including the Board of Visitors for Valilevu Hospital, Real Estate Licensing Board and the Fiji Public Service Credit Union, where he served on the Board of Directors from 2004 to 2009. Vande was endorsed as a provisional candidate for Sodelpa for this year's general election. Now, in an ever-evolving technological world, it's important to keep up with the pace. Hence, the Chinese largest provincial media, Guangdong Radio and Television, is tracking the path. The youngest and most innovative department, known as the New Media, Trudian, has taken social media use to another level to disseminate news on the go. Rachel Nart visited the media house recently. The Guangdong Radio and Television consist of three news centers, claiming the largest Cantonese radio network and the second largest Cantonese television network in the world, including the Trudian. At the GRT headquarters, we produce over 100 local news contents per day over all our platforms, and every day there are 15 live broadcasting news shows. The equipment at the television arm is state-of-the-art. Visual sets, green rooms and live screens. And to top it all, the news anchor has full control on the OTQ. Apart from the traditional media platforms, the Trudian has the fastest platform with a large team to post news on all social media sites. You can see all these four, four colleagues and it, this is the youngest department. Um, the average rate, uh, age is 28 mm -hmm. and you can see all the popular news here in our Trudian apps. The GRT consists of 24 television channels, 9 radio stations and is owned by the Guangdong Provincial Government based out of Guangzhou. Rachel Na, 
FBC News. Up ahead in sports, police blues to meet Navy in Escort Shield final next week. And the senior to battle RKS Old Boys in Korturanga Cup final. Viola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Koroko, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji Airways drew aside started the National Rugby Championship on a high note after hammering Melbourne Rising 40-17 at Nosori's Ratazakambal Park this afternoon. The Fijian side made a slow start where they scored two tries and led 14-7 at half time. They came firing in the second half adding another four tries. Here are the scores. The line darts and throws a long cutout pass. Is this the first try of the match? It is! up by the drawer, here's Saru, he throws it out to the left, the drawer are going to counter immediately, and they do through Kuramudu, who jots it down, Marty, who steps back on the inside, the drawer, oh. the drawer score a fantastic try, Ford's just starting to rumble, they throw it out wide, and here's a try to Fiji Drawer, King kicks it over the top, sitting up for Naivalu, is it the ball's allowed to bounce, popping it back for Masters, with the, gets the offload away, the replacement, Number 20 back on the inside, back to Volker, who gives it off again. Oh. And the draw go back to back through Dyer. And they get it out the back to Meeks. Meeks with the pass for the corner. Police Blues will defend the escort shield against Navy at Suva's Albert Park next week. This after, police made a strong comeback in its 17-7 victory against Covenant Blues in the first semi-final at Bidesi Park this afternoon. Melita Banga reports. It was a slow start for the police blues and they trailed 5-7 in the first half against Covenant Blues. To give the, um, uh, our strength is on the forwards, to give, use the forwards uh, much by three or second phase before we use the back line. And I think um, that one uh, goes well with us and we score 300 points in the second half. Solomon Inute says they have a week to iron out their weaknesses. We are focusing to, uh, from our set piece. We control our set piece, then we control the whole game. Team captain John and Delana says they were ready for the tough battle. We expect that uh, they are coming to bed. Uh, they were expecting a very good game from them. But uh, we have uh, done our part. We have, uh, we will make a winner today. Meanwhile, in the second semi-final, Navy defeated QVS All Boys 28 points to 18. Billy Tawanga, FBC Sports. Defending champion Nasinu proved too strong for fire wardens and secured a 23 to 16 victory to book a spot in the Koroturanga Cup final next week. The Nasinu side didn't give up. After trailing 11 to 9 in the first half, they regrouped in the second spell and scored two tries. The boys, our boys really work hard and uh, defend properly, so that's why we won the game. Mm -hmm. We don't have to change a lot of things, not just to prepare well. Eh? And uh, always in the final, it's a different standard. It's, it's always a hard game, so we have to expect that uh, we'll play a hard game next week. Meanwhile, the RKS All Boys defeated Police White 22-19 to in the second semi-final to book its first Koroturanga Cup final. The Wellington rugby side is back on track after securing a win over Southland 14-0 in the Mitre 10 Cup at Westpac Stadium last night. Wellington came out firing, scoring all its six tries in the first half. Quick ball that time, the little jab through and snapped up. And Umanga Jensen's marshalled. Now the short pass and I think it's Omur. The space here for Wes Herson and uh, Ben Lamb. And he strolls in and scores some options, but he may not need them. There it is for a try scorer. Garden Bash, it slips it off to Blackwell. And the Tui Tama, and he gets support from Ben Lamb. 
The Vodafone Under-18 Girls League is a perfect platform for officials to select players for the national side that will take part in the Under-19 OFC Champions League next year. The Fiji Football Association has been scouting talents during the weekly competitions in all divisions. Melita Vanga reports. These girls are playing under watchful eyes and will only make it to the national squad if the selectors are impressed with their performance. We are in the process of selecting the next uh, batch of under-19 players that will go into uh, the competition next year, uh, OFC under-19 girls competition. So at the same time we have some under-16 players that are playing also in the same league. So it's, it's given us uh, some uh, better idea of uh, Fitch Football has been uh, investing on this, uh, this league uh, so that we are able to prepare some future good players for the future. Meanwhile, Southern Zone's second place team, Northland Tailevu, showed another classic performance, hammering Rewa 7 1 in round 7 of the league this afternoon. Another game uh, next week. I think it's Tailevu uh, Nitasiri. They are the team to beat. They are unbeaten at the moment. So we're going to go back and train for. On train and come back next week Friday again. So far, Northland Tailevu has won five games, lost one and finished one in a draw. They are one point behind league leaders Tailevu Naita Siri that has 17 points. In other matches this afternoon, Tailevu Naita Siri beat Nasinu 4 0, while Navu outclassed Suva 4 0. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. Cloudy periods with brief showers was experienced over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Now looking at the west, fine with temperature ranging between 28 and 30 degrees. And eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, patches of cloud, brief showers and sunshine. And all the way up north, beautiful conditions with temperatures soaring to 33 degrees. At sea, moderate to fresh, fresh east to southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide will be at 9.43 with low tide at 3.44 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.13. Now for tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands is expected. It should be fine elsewhere. Looking further on to Monday, fine conditions are to continue. Recapping the main stories, President's reappointment will not affect elections, says Attorney General. Businesses challenged to make tough decisions and China ready to enhance trade cooperation with Fiji. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment. And this week, we're asking, should there be more counsellors and facilities set up for Fijians battling depression? You can visit our FBC website to answer. Or do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email at fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Soname Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singa Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jacks Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. <laughs>